Welcome to another edition of Sacred Mountain Battle Reports. Today we're going to be playing our first in a series of campaign games uh, for Burrows and Badgers. I'm not sure that we'll record every single game, but we'll try to record quite a few of them. Uh, this is a group of about seven players, uh, fairly experienced war gamers, that just really have gotten into the whimsical nature of uh, this game. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's really unusual for us to be playing uh, as we've mostly switched to a historical wargaming uh, community. But uh, it's just kind of, it's just fun. It's just a fun, easy, low model count, low, uh, easy playability, low uh, barrier to entry war game. Uh, today we're going to be playing a scenario from the book, uh, Collect the Pay Chest when uh, one of the characters has to search for and find a pay chest and then get it off the board. In addition, in these scenarios, you get a secondary objective that you have to roll for and then choose uh, of your roles which of the one or more secondary objectives that you get. The game, instead of based on points, is based on pennies. Uh, and you collect pennies throughout the campaign, and you can even have a increasingly large war band uh, and you're not limited to this like like a 350 or 2000 point 40k list um, your amount of pennies shrinks and grows based on how you spend them in the game and you also have a den that you keep in the game and that den gets upgraded with things like smithies or gardens or practice ranges or gymnasiums and those can help your characters level up the statistics in Burrows and Badgers are measured by uh, dice rather than having a, you know, for example, in Dungeons and Dragons, you'd have a strength of 18. Well, in Burrows and Badgers, you have a strength of D6. That means on a contested roll, uh, I should say strike, on a contested roll, you would be rolling a D6 versus maybe another character's block, uh, which may be a D8. Now, the interesting thing on Burrows and Badgers is the perfect roll. If you roll the maximum number on your dice, whatever it is, from D4 to D12, you get plus 7 points. Finally, the thing I'm going to say is that all characters have the same number of total hit points. All right, that's a long intro. Uh, let's get to the game. It's Burrows and Badgers game. Uh, this is the Queen's Gardeners. Uh, we have uh, Bosley who is a massive badger with a spear. Uh, Basil, uh, who is a healer uh, with a single-handed weapon. Uh, he's the second. The leader is Captain Jack, a pirate-looking beagle uh, with uh, a pistol and a cutlass, as well as Spick and Span. Uh, Spick and Span, they're hedgehogs with light armor, bucklers, and single-handed weapons. We're doing Secure the Pay Chest, and my secondary, or my Warband rating is 45. This is their first fight uh, in our new campaign, and they are called the Queen's Gardeners. All right, what we got here are the Wild Beast list for Badgers and Burrows. This is the uh, Order of the Thorn. It is led by Radagast the Green, the great and wise druid of the wilds. Uh, the, his second in command right here is Guion, uh, and he's got a great big shield, and he's really good at, oh no, I'm sorry, he's Prendati, the Prince of Squirrels. And, uh, and then, uh, the guy here with the sword, his name is Guion, uh, and then the elder in behind him, his name is Morda, and, uh, uh, equipped with just, you know, hand weapons. They're kind of the, the mainline fighting force squirrels, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, their accompaniment here, these three archers, these three mice who may be blind, maybe, uh, but they're great with their bows. This is, uh, Geely, Feely, and Squee, and they're all brothers, and nobody can tell them apart, so, you know. All right, and what was your secondary for Secure the Page Chest? My secondary is Invade. Okay, my secondary is Assassinate. This is our first campaign game, uh, and uh, we'll see how the battle reports work out. All right, uh, the table edges are about the eave of the roof uh, and the top of the hill uh, over to here. It's about 44-inch uh, by 36-inch wide 
uh, table. The Secure the Pay Chest, it's a well-hidden treasure chest in one of these two terrain pieces. You can search either one. Uh, this is the Queen's Gardener's deployment. And what was your warband's name again? Oh, the uh, Order of the Thorn. The Order of the Thorn's deployment. And he has one mouse, uh, squee, two mice, two. two Geely and where's, Feely. where's the other one that's burrowed? Oh, it's well hidden. Well mm. hidden, you'll never find her. I don't, I don't see the other one. Uh, She's over here in the forest. Uh, okay, well, we might have to redeploy that. She's uh, right at the edge. She, yeah, so that's yeah, that's out of bounds. So, that's, um, no, that's right. All right, at the so edge. We'll, Jason's already cheating. I oh, see how this is working out. Uh, okay, so here we go, our first campaign game. Okay, here we are at the end of turn two. Um, uh, this little mouse in here uh, that has now left combat uh, really shot the hell out of Captain Jack. Oh, here he is. I'm so happy that you keep losing my mice. And Just... uh, <laughs> and then uh, he, Captain Jack got healed up by Basil. Uh, and then Bosley charged in, tried to kill the mouse. Uh, mouse has like maybe four hit points left on him. Uh, and uh, Span spent five fate points searching for the pay chest. Uh, and then Spick came over, spent three more found it and the dice signifies that after he found it uh, all hell let loose and the squirrels are sprinting up towards me uh, with his leader still hanging out in the back with his line of sight infinite range spell infinite infinite okay end of turn three is that right Jason yes. three um, so you can't sprint with the chest so he was only able to move one roll but I rolled a six which was kind of helpful um, trying to protect him as he falls back uh, away from everyone. Um, this guy used Stag's Leap and got a was able to strike him uh, uh, from inside the building. Yeah, from inside the building. And then jumped. Was able to strike him. Then Spick left combat. And everybody's ganging up on my leader, trying to make him take him out of action. Uh, and well, in our defense, he is a bastard, so he is a bastard. So, um, <laughs> uh, he's I don't have hardly much, hardly any armor because I'm a royalist and I'm just planning on making it uh, as the campaign goes on. So, uh, it's gonna be uh, maybe a quick game unless he can take that chest and uh, kill me. All right, turn four. Okay, so uh, end of turn four, we've got quite the scrum going on, Bosley. The badger moved up, couldn't attack, didn't have enough movement, but sprinted over. Um, Spick still has the chest. Uh, Basil tried to heal Captain Jack. Captain Jack's getting beat up pretty good by these squirrels. Um, uh, only healed him two, then lost two immediately. Uh, this guy has shield bash skill, and Span just can't put a wound on him, and Span just keeps getting beat up by the shield bash skill. Hopefully Bosley will be able to help out. Um, this squirrel moved up, uh, shot at uh, Spick and uh, did some damage, I think. We're going to use the red chips for hidden. Uh, this little damaged squirrel hid. This guy's still taking pot shots. Okay, got anything to say for yourself? Man, it's a fight. <laughs> I love it. Here we are at the end of turn five. We got still a hidden mouse. Uh, Spick left combat. Uh, and, or no, he didn't leave combat, he left combat the turn before, uh, rolled a four on his difficult terrain walk with the chest and hid next to this terrain piece. Uh, Basil came in, uh, whipped up on, what's this guy's name? Uh, Pr Prindati. Uh, I'm sorry, Bosley came in, whipped up on Prindati, Span tried to hit him, oh, did, was he successful? Uh. Yes, he did. He okay, did yeah. He first, did more damage than, uh, first, Bosley. first time he was able to wound him. Oh, he rolled a perfect. He made a perfect roll. Uh, Span did. Uh, Basil healed up Captain Jack. Captain Jack, I think maybe hit, a, took a wound off or two off one of the squirrels. No, nope, um, my squirrels are undamaged. Squirrels are undamaged. Captain Jack, Jack's undamaged because of Basil's healing drafts. And uh, that's it. Now we're on to turn six.
Uh, end of turn five or six. Uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, that is Prindati. Prindati got taken out of action by Bosley. Um, Captain Jack just got ten wounds on him from this pair. Uh, Spick is uh, still uh, hanging in there. He's got a minus one or minus two to his roll-offs. These guys are just shooting arrows from the distance and uh, the caster uh, Radagast, Radagast the is, green. is, uh, is uh, just has his unlimited spell range. Unlimited. Uh, okay, so uh, we're on turn six and or seven. Turn six. Sure. Yeah, one of those and we'll give you a recap. That was a quick turn. Uh, uh, we rolled initiative. I won the roll and then uh, my, for my first action was to get Spick off the board with the chest. Um, what was your secondary? Uh, invasion. And what was that? What were you that supposed is, to do? If I get uh, my guys in your deployment zone, I get plus two um, experience points per. All, all of my guy, all of your guys. So, so do no, these for each that I get in your. So these zone, guys. These, they, they each get a plus one. Each of the mice. Oh, that's pretty cool. So each of the mice is going to get a plus two. Plus two. Plus two and experience. Then everybody else will get plus one per. Oh, because of the invasion. Oh man, yeah. So that's really good. Uh, that was pretty good. My uh, mine was assassinate my secondary, and uh, <laughs> he's way over there. Uh, it was either that or kill four things, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that. I, I had that four things too, and I says no, not going to do it. Yeah. Um, so I like the chips. Uh, our convention right now is red means you can't shoot or attack them because they're hidden. That's not red. And then yeah, it is. And then uh, white means they're uh, getting a buffed spell. Uh, black chip means that it's uh, activated. Gone, yeah. um, it's a fun game. This is our second game of Burrows and Badgers. Our first uh, campaign game. Campaign game. So now we're going to go through the post scenario. Uh, like what you do afterwards uh, while we're just sitting down together, but I'll record that for our group so we kind of know what to do and what to expect. First portion of our post-battle sequence, uh, survivors and the injured. Uh, so a, we had one character in this battle that went out of action, so he has to make a fortitude roll-off with a target of six. Um, he has one fate point left, um, and he his fortitude is an eight. So you get a D8. Uh -huh. uh, so you can roll on that now. I'd like to use that fate point. Uh, I would use the fate point on the injury table if I were you. Yeah, but that one. Because you've got it. You need a seven. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so I need a six or higher. You need a six or higher. Not the greatest odds. But... No, it's rough. Eight. Eight. Okay. All right. So uh, he's going to return to. He's going to return to the game, and he gets one experience points. Okay, so we're a little out of order here. Um, so Jason's mice that are here on the edge of the uh, on the edge of my deployment zone uh, that uh, was able to get his secondary, and so they each was at Gilly, Philly, and Squee mm -hmm. got two experience points, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and then. They also got an additional one for surviving. Yes. Now, all of his other characters who survived, yes, which is all of them, because the one didn't get taken out of action, got one experience point. Yes. Then they got an additional one because he accomplished his secondary. Right. So secondaries. Are secondaries are pretty key. important. Yeah. Uh, I didn't accomplish my secondary, and although I won the scenario, uh, all my guys only got one experience just for surviving, and then Spick, because he took the pay chest off the... Uh, off the uh, grounds uh, got three experience so he'll get to roll on the table and so will his three mice uh, and we'll do that in just a moment okay, so Jason's off-duty phase uh, let's go through it so far the funnest part of the game I think. yeah this yeah. is pretty cool so so Radagast, Radagast the Green he worked in the magical garden and he got a reagents and made a little bit of uh, pennies he earned us 12 pennies right doing that yeah so yeah he got to he gets four 
four magical ingredients. Yes. And then two d six pennies from herbs that he's selling to the local villagers. Mm -hmm. And then he rolled twelve on two d six. I rolled twelve. For so the number of yeah, so he got two d six pennies there. Yeah. Um, one of our questions is the way that that's magical gardens worded. Can all of your characters work in the magical garden and get like that many pennies? Uh, two d times two d six or not? But anyway, yeah, I don't know. who knows? I mean, because you had what three guys work in the blacksmithy? Yeah, I'll get, we'll get to that in a second. So let's keep going with yours. So we've got your first guy. He was a uh, yeah. So Prendati, uh what did he do? He uh, I don't remember what he did. So one guy befriended a bat blacksmith and got could upgrade black oh, right. black powder weapons, but didn't. Yeah, the other one worked on a, a, a tin mine. A toll road. Oh, a tin, tin mine. mine. That's right. I got two uh, ingredients, mats. We got, yeah. I got one piece of tin, basically. You got one piece of tin materials. Materials, yeah. And this guy worked on a toll road. Toll road, robbing people on the road for seven pennies. Right. Yeah. And then, this is huge, what this guy, Geely, got. He found a chapel, chapel. and he prayed... And I got, he is filled with divine wrath and gains plus two to all rolls in the next game. So plus two on every roll that that little tiny freaking mouse who's now has a th level three experience. Right. So this guy's... So he's my sniper. Geely's pretty good now. Yeah. Um, and then this guy... Uh, so the next guy, let me see, what did he do? He... Uh, oh, it was a black marketeer, right? Black marketeer, so I get a discount on rare, rare items, items that are offered yeah and then another great roll this guy yep he scouts rolled a 20 20 and what does I scout get, do i get to choose whether to be the attacker or defender in the next game and i start with three mod my models hidden so super uber snipers start hidden in his next game right yeah all right so uh Let's see, uh, I'll, I'll do mine in just a second off camera and then we'll go from there. All right, so for uh, my off-duty phase, these guys made armor, Spick and Span made heavy armor for Bosley and Basil made light armor for Captain Jack. Uh, and now uh, Captain Jack uh, found a toll road and he made five pennies and now Bosley unfortunately found a gambling den and is going to spend all five pennies that Captain Jack just found <laughs> gambling. So I can wager for every penny I wager, I can roll a D8. If I roll a one, I get zero pennies. Or if I don't roll a one, I get the number of pennies that I roll. So yes. I roll, I'm choosing eight D8 here. So here's three. Uh-oh. So that's seven, eight, nine, ten pennies so far. Rolling two more D8s, no ones. All right, 10, 13, uh, plus another five, 18 pennies. Dude, your kids are hungry. Stop going to the bar and gamble. <laughs> okay, so this is the upkeep portion of the campaign. So you pay for food and upkeep for your uh, guys. And it's one for every small or medium. So that's one, two, three, four pennies. And three for a massive. So that's seven pennies for me and then for Jason, he has all small and medium. Yes. So this seven, seven pennies yeah. for him yeah. that he has to pay. Next is hire new recruits. I don't think I'm going to. How many pennies do you have, Jason? Twelve left. So he has twelve. I have quite a bit more than that. I have twenty-eight pennies left. Uh, but I'm probably not going to hire anybody. And now we're trading. Uh, so uh, next, I guess we're buying stuff and looking for. We might be yeah. rolling on rare. Do we roll yeah, on rare roll items? D four to see how many rare items were offered. Okay. So like, yeah. So uh, roll a D four for you, and then roll a D four for me. Okay. So I get one offered to me. Okay, and then roll one for me. And then you get four offered to you. Okay. And then do we roll to see what rare items are offered? Yeah. So the one offered to me is a four, which is a relic. Uh, a Warband with a Relic will automatically pass the first route roll off and make each game. Oh, that's cool. And it doesn't cost anything. No, I think it's going to cost something. Well, I think... it says if it costs anything, this doesn't say anything. Well, I, I bet it's elsewhere, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Roll for my four. Okay, so your 
first one is nine Master Smith swords. Ooh, that's nice. Three D eight pennies. Oh, they cost something. Yes. Okay, cool. So yours is free. Okay. And then your second one is offered as an eight, which is an arcane tome. So give me this. Roll. It's 2D 12 pennies. Okay, and roll which one it is. You get a three, which is a dark, dark magic, magic spell. spell. Because I'm a light magic caster, I'm not sure I'll be able to do that. And then, uh... You don't know the power of the dark side. Don't know the power of the dark side. <laughs> so, roll uh, one more d12 for me, or Six d10. Heavy armor, Master Smith. It costs 30 plus d12 pennies. Six. Uh... Okay, I'll roll for see how much that is. That's nice, because uh, I could sell my heavy armor that I just made, but that's okay. And then... Uh, that's is junky it, armor. Anyway. Is that... No, I've got one more. One more. Okay. Last one is a two. Pain poison. Pain poison. All right. D4 pennies per use. Okay. I'll see how much these cost, and then uh, we'll come back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another edition of Sacred Mountain Battle Reports. Uh... We, Jefferson State Wargamers, are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, but that'll be up to one of our members uh, to make that, because uh, I'm just a little too lazy to do it. Uh, anyway, um, so that was our first uh, campaign of Burrows and Badgers. Really pretty cool. The post-game sequence uh, was easier than I thought it was going to be. I, I just had not read those rules, but it's super quick. It's straightforward. Got a. F I, t I tell you what, I won the scenario, but Jason came out really well. Uh, he got so much stuff, and I felt like I really, although one uh, didn't win because of his secondary and got to level up so much, and of course didn't get injured with the uh, squirrel that I was able to take out of action. Anyway, uh, I hope to do some more. Uh, Burrows and Badgers Battle Reports, and I uh, hope you guys can tune in. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Have a great day, and uh, thanks for watching.